Well, welcome everyone. And as I said earlier, this is not a lecture. This is a simple study. Feel free to jump, feel free to ask, feel free to contribute, right? This is something very simple. And I would like to make that simple as possible. So everyone feel comfortable to talk, to ask, to contribute. There's a lot of formatted things on the internet and that's not our goal. This is not a classroom. This is not a course. This is a study that we all will learn together. Hopefully, I will learn more. Uh, well, as usual, I like to read the introduction of the book. But reading this one today, I thought that we would benefit more jumping into the first chapter, right? I'm not here to convince anyone about anything. I'm here to share with you my take of this book, the way I understand, maybe a bit different because I will try to drag your attention to few things that I did not catch myself in the beginning. I was speaking to some people back in Brazil that they know way more than me. And every time you read Andrea Luis, we learn something different. It's like we are in a massive video game and we start to learn something different. We move a level and we move to another level and we start to read again and you see things that you could not see before. I don't remember how many times I read this book already. And every time I was able to find something different. So hopefully we'll find something different ourselves, right? And if for any reason I'm reading something that I missed, and if you do see anything interesting, please feel free. Hey, you jump something. There's something important here. Let's talk about that, all right? So chapter one, the lower zones. I was under the impression that I had lost all notions of time and space. Making a brief, I, I jumped too quickly. So making a brief comments, this book will bring us knowledge from someone that passed away to the spiritual world and he start to describe his vision, his experiences from the point he arrived over there. So, he will make this proper introduction himself, but uh, as I do not know all of you guys, I don't know if you already had any contact with the book or you know what is that about, but basically is one of the books that brought to us a massive knowledge of the spiritual world, massive. A lot of people think that Andre Louis' books are more like a romance, it is not. It is more like a scientific work than anything else. And you see, as we stood, when, when you go along, a lot of people read only nice things as they want to read. And that's very normal. But Andre Luis, he brought to us a massive knowledge about the spiritual world, right? We all have in our minds, what we would like to see on the spiritual world, what we believe of the spiritual world. And because that is our truth, sometimes we do not allow ourselves to read this book as it should be. So you may be surprised if you think that you thought you knew, you read that before, but perhaps with a different interpretation, we'll try to catch new things. So now let's go to the book then. First thing that he mentioned is that he lost notion in time and space. Mm, what about us? Are we expecting to arrive on the other side of the, on the spiritual world and still counting hours, days, weeks? Some people think that is exactly the same. Some people don't. I heard over the years that on well, the spiritual world, time is different. I will throw some questions like that, some opinions like that. And as we move along in this study, 
hopefully we'll be able to have a different idea about that, okay? I was convinced that I no longer belong to the world of the living, yet I continue to inhale deep breath of air. You will see that I like to study in a different way. I'm not in a hurry, not at all. And when we are not in a hurry, we give ourselves the opportunity to read word by word and try to understand the meaning of it. In the second sentence, André Luiz already said that he is breathing. Have you thought about that before? I guess that we all understand and accept that when we die, we have a spiritual body. Well, at least most of us, I guess. What about our spiritual body breathing? Have you thought about that? Mm, interesting, isn't it? But by the way, this was written by André Luiz, the message received by Chico Xavier, that I guess you all know who he, he was, who he is. So it's not me then, it's written in the book by people that uh, at least in the spiritist world, it would be hard to fight with them saying that you not, you shouldn't write that, you shouldn't say that. So those two guys that deserve my up to most respect, André Luiz and Chico Xavier, they are saying here that André Luiz was able to breathe air on the spiritual world, all right? To you guys that are not familiar with the way we do studies, I really encourage you open your mic, ask, comments, anything you like, okay? Since when, I, since when had I become the puppet of irresist, irresistible forces? I could not say. I felt like a prisoner trapped in the dark cage of horror. Well, he lost the reference of time. And as you will see, the place he went was not the most, was not a preferable place to be in the spiritual world, right? So we don't know if he had a watch, if he was able to keep a pace of days or nights. But if you want to think about someone in a hospice, they also lose the reference of time. Some of them, they don't know if it's day or night anymore because they don't see light, they don't see outside. So that is applicable to us incarnated as well, depending on the circumstances. With my hair on, on end, my heart thumping uncon uncontrollably, a prey of terrible fear. Many times I shouted like raving lunatic, What do you see different here? He made a he mentioned his hair. So now we are talking that a spirit has a hair. And by now, I guess you're probably thinking, what kind of strange study is that? I never pay attention on this. Why is he mentioned that kind of thing that uh, was easy to read, but I never bother to pay attention on that. We will see that in the future. I begged for mercy and clamored against the bitter despondency which had taken hold of my spirit. But my cries fell only on silence or were answered by lamenting voices still more moving than my own. So now he mentioned that he's no longer alone. He, he has a notion that there are other people there, right? At other times, since the roars or laughter rent the stillness as if some unknown companion must be close by me, a prisoner of insanity. So he is describing to us that he's definitely not in a nice place, right? 
diabolical forms, ghastly faces, bestial countenances crossed my way from time to time, increasing my panic. So he may, he's mentioned to us that he had encounter things that are not nice to see. So Andre Luis is bringing to us that the location he was, was definitely not pleasant, right? The scenario when it was not pitching dark was bathed with lurid light as if shrouded in a thick fog warmed by the sun's rays, S rays. Thus, I proceed on this strange journey to what end? Who could say? I only knew that I kept fleeing. Fry drove on, drove on blindly. Where were my home, my wife, my children? So interesting that he, he's missing the family. Just a minute, I see 12 messages on the chat. Mm. There's one question here from Elsa. How the spirits need air? Do they need air? What do you think? What do you guys think? Do they need air? No one wants to say anything. Come on. Yes, they do. <laughs> mm. They do because the vital body carries on all the functions of our physical bodies to the astral because uh, the vital body has the characteristics. Um, so as it is in heaven, so it is here on earth. So uh, they do have a certain type of air, which is special to that type of body that we have in the astral realm. Mm, pretty good, pretty good. I like the answer. <laughs> As we move along, we'll see a lot of more things like that, right? Nancy says here, sometimes I am lost in time and space in this very material world, imagine. Well done, Nancy, you're not alone. <laughs> so let's move on then. The fear of unknown and my dread of darkness has annulled all my powers of reasoning from the very moment I had broken free of my physical body in the grave. Now we come to a point. By the way, I, I do this study also in Portuguese for like two years now in another place, like, you know. And when I came to that point on the chapter one, I mentioned to everyone, now that you have a glance of the way I like to study, paying attention on some details that you guys may not, I am forced to tell you that the goal of my study is to tell you that I would like to prepare us all to die better. What? Yes. Andrea Luis brought enough knowledge that will make us comfortable with the possibility to die better. I think we all make up our minds in what we think about the spiritual world, but the way he will present that to us will increase our knowledge, our aware awareness about the spiritual world. Things that we may have read, but we never thought. And by the end of the study, this book and the collection of books from Andrea Luis, because they are marvelous, I'm pretty confident that I can say that I will die better because I know what I'm, will be waiting for me on the other side. At least I know if I'm doing right, what could be waiting for me on the other side? It's fair to say that if I'm not doing right, 
I will also know what will be waiting for me on the other side. So I think that's the main gain from the whole Angelou's collection. But you will tell me later, hopefully, what you think. My conscience tormented me. I would have preferred the total absence of reason or non-existence. Copious tears ran constantly down my cheeks and only rarely was blessed with a few minutes of sleep. What rest I had was often interrupted by monstrous beings awoke me and mocked me, and I was obliged to go on fleeing. What are those monstrous beings? What are they? Do they exist? Because I heard as well on the, on the spiritist environment that now they don't exist. Because we have a misconception that everything is bright. Quite often we say to, to our family members when someone passed away, oh, so better now, he will rest. Really? I hope not. I hope he was still working hard, doing good things. Or because of who he was, the choices he made, he will be in a situation that he needs to run, run for his life. Because he will be facing situations like this described by Andrea Luis. Quite often he was interrupted by monstrous beings that we all know they. He is talking about spirits, right? But yeah. there's only spirits. Someone open the mic? No, I was just agreeing with what you said. I'm sorry. Okay, all right. No, because I just saw, I was so happy because I, I, I hear a little microphone open. That's, oh dear, good. Hi, Ebony. <laughs> I was just going to say that um, those monstrous beings, I think, um, are spirits just like ourselves, who um, perhaps through their lifetime might have abused their parent spirits, and um, so they don't have um, the typical form, human form anymore. Um, I don't know, but that's what it appears to me. No, but it's exactly that, pretty good. But on top of what you said, there are also animals, right? What you said is 100% right, but there are also animals over there, okay? And we will see that as we go along. I saw now that I was on a different plane of life, which rose from the emanations of the earth, but it was too late. Anguish weighed, weighed heavily on my mind, and when I started making plans for action, numerous incidents would lead me on the bewildery avenues of thought. By the way, on the spiritual world, we'll have a lot of time to think, and quite often a lot of time to think about what we regret. So it's better arrive in the spiritual world working harder than what we do here. When I see someone going to the spirit institution once a week and thinking that is doing a lot, <laughs> I hope you come back to tell me when you move to the next side, if that was a lot or not, <laughs> right? I never had the religious question loomed so large before my eyes. Principles purely political, philosophical and scientific now seem to me of secondary importance to human life. He was a doctor, right? You may don't know yet, but uh, if you read once the book, you know already, he was a doctor. And everything that's very important to people with degree, at least, on the other side is not. And sometimes we give so much value to to what we are here, but on the other side, is not what we were, is what is our heart, what we did with our heart, with our opportunities. 
although they were valuable acquisitions on Earth. I had to admit that mankind was not made of transitory generations, but of immortal spirits on their ascension to a glorious destination. Mm. To a doctor to say that, or let's say to a non-believer to say that, is already a big step, right? But bear in mind that he is describing when he was there, because when he was there, very unlikely he would have the conditions to make such a sentence. That is a report after he left, not a report when he was there. When he was there, very unlikely he would be able to describe anything that we just read. I was beginning to realize the existence of one thing that stands above all, that is material or intellectual, faith, a divine manifestation to man. Such an analysis, however, came too late. It is true that I was familiar with the Old Testament and had often read through the gospels, but I was forced to recognize that I had never searched the sacred writings in the light of my heart. I had embraced the interpretation of writers who were not inclined to sentiments and conscience and who were at times even in open disagreement with the fundamental truth. truth. On other occasion, I had taken an ecclesiastical point of view, entering voluntarily into a circle of contradictions. Let me read on the shot here. Guilherme, please close your shot. Yeah, I did. Okay. Sorry guys, I didn't know, I did not know that you could see my chat when it was open. <laughs> well. Your chat is black, is uh, sometimes cover the screen. Yeah, I, yeah, good to know, I, I did not realize that, sorry. I won't do again, promise. And uh, well, I would like to, ask you all to make your own mind about everything you're gonna see here. Don't take anything that come out of my mouth as granted. Why I'm saying that? Because I would like you guys to study, to come to your own conclusions, to see if what we're gonna see here today makes sense or not. It's not because someone is saying here in front of a camera or whatever that he is right. Let's make a, an exercise. Let's analyze ourselves. Hi, Silas, you raise your hand. Yeah, I think the studies that we are doing now, are, uh, for me, it's, um, it's beyond what I probably could have imagined um, because um, these are subjects which growing up have been taboo uh, but now through books like uh, Andre Louis' uh, Astro City we are casually looking at life <laughs> after death and studying it and picking it apart and that communal understanding really inspires me a lot I think uh, we have come a, a long way to this point and if the world um, population can adopt this culture where we can uh, congregate and really study these writings. I think we're taking leaps into the future. And, uh, and at a certain point in time, we shall also be able to apply scientific knowledge um, into these studies. And I think the, the, that means the difference between this world and the other world, really the distance is going to reduce incredibly. That's what I, the way I look at it, yeah. Silas, we were told from very early days what we should believe, what we should do, what, uh, what is right, what is wrong. The spiritism is not about that. The spiritism is about freedom of thinking, study, Use reasoning, 
ask. There's a lot of people don't like to answer questions, but ask. Don't be afraid about ask questions related to anything you could not understand. And this book is a prime example. When this book was written, a lot of people in the spiritist movement did not accept what was there. Chico Xavier had a hard time because he heard so many friendly comments inside the spiritist movement. So I ask you all, keep an open mind. Try to see things in a different perspective with a different pair of eyes. Because things like I pointed here so far, I'm pretty sure that the majority of people never thought about that. Because we all believe when we die, we're gonna be uh, spirits, like a gas balloon, flying from left to right, doing everything by thought. I think so exist. And we have had in the speeches, well, almost 75 years, books telling us a lot of things that we choose not to pay attention. So it's just a matter of us to keep an open, uh, open mind. And in the end, if you think that's not, not possible, so be it. That's your choice, it's your truth. But then if you come to a point where you don't believe, you are saying that what Andrea Luis brought to us is not true. And what Chico Xavier did is not true either. So then we have a problem, but that's for the future. It's too early to stay. At the moment, keep your mind open. <laughs> you saw that I'm, I'm having fun, right? Let's move on a little bit. In truth, I did not believe that I was a criminal in my life. Though my philosophy of living for the immediate present had absorbed me fully. My earthly life now transformed by death had been no different from the life of so many others. Well, of course, we all believe that when we die, we already have a place in our solar, in astral city to all of us. It's very natural. We all believe that as soon as I die, I have a, a bus already prepared to take me over there. Isn't it? I'm pretty sure a lot of people think like that. But Andre Luis is telling us here that there's a lot of people like him over there. Right? So Nosula may not be that straightforward, at least for me. So we need to see what we think and what are our possibilities. Born of perhaps excessively generous parents, I had graduated from the university without much effort and shared the dissipation and vices of the youth of my time. Later, when I married and started a family, I was blessed with children, gained a stable and lucrative position and was spared of all financial worries. Yet on self-examination, I felt deeply that I had wasted time and I now hear the silent pangs of my consciences. I have lived on earth, enjoyed its benefits, reaped the good things of life, and yet never contributed anything towards the repayment of my heavy debt. I had completely ignored my parents, I didn't know his parents' generosity and sacrifice, just as I had ignored those of my wife and children. Let me stop here a little bit, otherwise I'll move too much. Well, now we know that he had an easy life, sort of, 
when he was incarnated, right? He had all the opportunities, but we also know that he started to tell us that he regretted some of his choices. Why, why I'm saying that? Because we are all like Andre Luis, regardless if you are doctors, if you have money or not have money, we all will have to go through the same scenario. When I mean same scenario is finish our earthly life and we start to get used to our spiritual life. He mentioned here one thing that's very important. And he was gonna mention about that through the book, my conscience. How is my conscience today? Am I okay with myself, with everything I'm doing? Am I okay with my choices? Am I okay with the way I help others? Am I okay with the way I use my mediumship? Am I okay? Hmm. I like to ask this question very often to myself. I had selfishly kept my family only to myself, my family only to myself. I had been given a happy home. I had a close, I had closed my doors to those seeking help. I had delighted in joy of my familiar circle, yet never shared a precious, precious gift with my greater human family. I had neglect to undertake even the most elementary duties of fraternal solidarity. I don't think we need to comment here, isn't it? But uh, so clear that his conscience start to shout about things that he could have done and he decide not to do. And that's one of my main fears. Now that my life was all over, I was like a hot, hot, hot house plant, unable to withstand the weather of eternal realities. I had not cultivated the divine seeds the father of life had sown in my soul. And that, that has a burden, really, you know? Uh, I, I, I'm, I was born in a spiritist family, right? What kind of excuse can I use when I move to the other side and someone tells me that I haven't done enough? <laughs> it would be hard to explain. It would be hard to explain. So if we are having any contact with any Jesus teachings, it would be very hard to explain. I had not, by the way, you are so quiet. Please help me out. Don't leave me talking alone for an hour. You can help me too. Huh? I had not trained my faculties for this new life. It was only right then that I should enter it like a cripple, throw into the infinity river of eternity, unable to swim, or like a wretched beggar at the end of his strength, wandering about the middle of a storm desert. What time is it? I don't want to pass the time. Okay, still have time. There is something. Well, yeah, go, Silas. Yeah, I wanted to chip in there a little bit. Uh, uh, when you uh, listen to uh, these voices coming through, um, you feel the pain that they have. And for them, uh, the pain was so strong that they um, uh, they felt the least they could do was to publish a book. And fortunately for us, we're still here on earth. And therefore the cooperation that we can encourage between us and them can help us to, um, to, to, to send out a stronger arm uh, towards uh, uh, the, the work that um, it should, should have been done, particularly when we have the opportunities for being incarnated. 
And so um, I find these lessons really exciting because we can cooperate and uh, be able to use our abilities, skills, so that when we cross over, as you have rightly pointed out, we do not have to get uh, overwhelmed by serious questions <laughs> about how we used our talents. Instead, there should be satisfaction that we actually did the right thing and uh, we're able to contribute. Uh, satisfactory, to, uh, to, according to Andrew Luiz. Should Andrew Luiz, uh, would he be satisfied with the work we're doing? Thank you. Cool. Cool. Uh, there's one thing here, right? We believe that when we die, our spiritual body will be exactly the same as we are, right? We're all hoping to keep the same beard, same hairstyle, same clothes, right? Let's remember that Andrea Luiz, he was a doctor. I'm not saying he was that wealthy, but he had enough money to be well-dressed. He had the conditions to have a nice haircut, right? And when he passed away, all the information he's telling us is that he arrived over there in a totally different way. He was like a beggar. He was crippled, right? How is that possible? We in the spiritism, we say that the matrix of our physical body is the spiritual body. So if my physical body is like that, why am I crippled on the other side? I'm just, we, I think we all know the answer, right? But I'm just saying that because we need to pay attention to this kind of thing. Sometimes we, we lie to ourselves about what we are who we are, but on the other side, there's no lie. Oh, dear friends on earth, how many of you may still avoid the bitter road by sorrow, by cultivating the inner fields of your heart? Light up your lamp before crossing the threshold of the shadows. Search for truth. Lest the truth you find unprepared, sweet and toil now, least you weep afterwards. So basically, he's telling us what I think we all know already, right? We need to improve ourselves. And there's no, I oh, will do it tomorrow. You may not have tomorrow. So do it now. And the spiritism, we hear a lot, everybody has their own time. Everybody will learn when they are ready to. That's true, but that's not clever. <laughs> if we don't know when we die, if we don't know if we have the opportunities to improve ourselves in time, that's not clever. I think that before, well, I'm not gonna jump into the second chapter. I don't think that's the goal. I think we, we had enough things for tonight here reading, but I would like to hear you guys. What do you think about the way we are reading, studying, commenting? What would you expect from this study? Can you share with me what you expected from this study? Can I stop the recording? No, well, can leave it until the end. That, that's not a problem. But people agree it's, it's okay. But it's difficult it's to okay. click the video. When Zoom asked us if there, in the beginning, if there was any problem to record, the person agreed already. <laughs> okay. So if you're here, you agree. <laughs> Hi, Silas. I see your hand. Yeah. Um... That first chapter actually challenges us a lot because um, Andre Luiz, um, we, we could even stop at that first chapter, really, because um, how we use our time is of utmost importance, but it kind of goes to the background because we are so busy with living life, we fail to see that other, um, uh, that other call upon us. 
And as you rightly stated, like we're giving one hour to these studies, we're giving one hour to this work, but how much are we supposed to be giving for this work? Um, probably 24 hours in a day. We're still seated in class for two hours only. Uh, I've loved it so much. We should be sitting in class even more because um, and then we shall be doing, um, uh, we'll be doing justice to the time that we have uh, on earth. And I can also say there are many people who are waiting for us because how many people have not heard about these studies yet? Not many, uh, so many people have not even heard about spiritism completely. And so the, there's that call to duty that we should also do our part to uh, emanate the message to the bigger audience. And then I have a collective, like I would be happy to see big schools where people are studying the lessons and then getting practical answers on how to proceed. Like tomorrow morning when we wake up, how do we proceed with this? Uh, for me, that is the the most important contribution that these books are making to us. They're giving us a practical guide on how we can proceed. Thank you. I can see that most of you are very shy, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, how... I, I find it a little bit overwhelming because I mean, all this about time is very precious, okay? Like you, you have like eight hours a day work, then you have your kids, dinner, or... So, it's, I mean, even an hour for some people can be a lot of their time as well. So it's, it's quite scary because it seems that may not be enough. So that's one of the reasonings sometimes we think, right? Uh, don't, don't get me wrong, right? I do work. I do have kids, young kids. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. family. We all have lives. Yeah. But quite often we choose to dedicate our time to other things, right? And uh, we are not saying that someone needs to live 24 seven all day like that, all day studying, all day in charity. It's not that, but have a balance. Look after your family. It's already a challenge, it's a duty. It's part of the work. But sometimes there are a lot of people that think that I, I'm, I'm, let me use a phrase that I heard more than once. I'm giving to Jesus one hour per week. Is that enough? It's up to everyone to answer. Not, we are not here judging anyone. If you think that one hour is enough, so be it. But when we go to the spiritism, to the mediumship meetings, from time to time, we have a visit from ex-colleagues, spiritists. And what they say to us is a heads up, an eye opening. I wish I could have done more. Why they are saying that? Sometimes we have that through books. You can find that in the library. Spiritist library, but as I participate in leadership meetings, I also had that in the first hand. People I even knew when they were incarnated telling us, I wish I had done more. Because we always can do more. Not all the time, that's not a thing. But we can always do more. And uh, thinking about the, the, the house I'm connected back in Brazil, for example. We have activity every day. We are not expecting everyone to be there every day. No, that, that's not what we are there. But it's up to you to decide what you can offer. Because the, the difference is when you are doing something like that, you're not doing it for yourself, are you? Most of the people think they are doing for the others, right? I know that I, I'm yeah, not, I that. yeah, I think, I mean, I study for myself. I mean, I learn to understand better. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. You don't need to be anywhere to study. You can study by your own. 
Of course. Yeah. But when when he he's saying here that he haven't used the opportunities, it's not just in regards of study. He haven't used the opportunities to practice everything he could have practiced. And that only the person can answer. If you have done enough, if you haven't done enough, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm doing enough. Sometimes I had the feeling that I'm not doing enough because sometimes we study a lot and we do not practice a lot. Mm -hmm. From what we are talking here, what I would say is that we need to find a balance a balance that keep our heart in peace and that's it and that's it but my experience is that if you only dedicate one hour per week to do good for example to do charity or something may not be enough but, uh, depends sometimes the, the only hour you have is that you're doing so it's more than what I do for 10 days, you know, case by case. Yeah, hands up. Yeah. I, I was thinking about education because we are always in our spiritual center, put our attention to mediumship. We have to do mediumship here and there, here and there. And we forget the most important thing that is educating our small children, young people, teenagers preparing them for spirituality, for future life, for adults, being a good adult, we will change the world. But until now, what we are doing, I don't think we are put uh, the, the attention and the most important things in our in spiritual center, in our studies, open to, to the young people, give them the opportunity to prepare things, to do courses, or even teach us because there are young people. They are really, really good in, in things that they are saying, organizing, even medials, eh? medials uh, young medials, etc. But it's only my comments that everything, I think with Andre Luis, I didn't know about his uh, time when he was a young teenager or children, a child, but I think the, he, he didn't have the um, spirituality or you no know, things that should be done when we have the little ones before I grow up. On my mind, I don't know if it's okay. I, I think education is always positive. Education. Education for ourselves, education for the others. Mediumship is more important. I don't know. Education is more important. I don't know. I think there are so many differences between one institution to another. We should do everything that we, we can. And if you do everything we can with our hearts, that's it. I saw, I think it was Ebony who, who heads the land, was it? Oh, I was, um, I wanted to draw, uh, in, draw your attention, um, going back to the comments that you made earlier on. Uh, the preface of the book um, by Emmanuel, the last sentence reads as follows. To this end, we have great need of spiritism and spiritualism, but most of all, spirituality. And um, I think we all have a responsibility to educate ourselves. And um, if we, at least I know in my case, I, I had to do a bit of an attitude adjustment um, and realize that I'm, you know, it's not about quantifying how much I study or um, I have to think, about, for me, it was more about um, thinking about the fact that my spiritual life is really and truly all that matters. And um, if I don't prepare myself, for um, the life that that is coming, um, you know, I'm definitely going to be in the spiritual realm as a discarnate at some point in time, sooner or later. 
and I want to prepare myself as much as possible, um, not just for me, but for everybody that is connected to me. Um, I want to do everything that I can to awaken as much as I can based on their interest. And so I see it as a personal responsibility and not so much, okay, well, I gave um, this amount of time, I did, I did this, and so I think it's enough. Um, by making that attitude adjustment, I know for me, I became much more excited. It's like I found this whole new life and I want to share it with everybody. And I think if we can find a way to motivate ourselves and inspire ourselves as to what the spiritual life is all about, it would be easier for us to dedicate the time and attention that we need to study. I totally agree with you. Uh... Andrea Luis is a wonderful way to do what you just said. Increase your awareness about the spiritual world. And you will see that on the other side, looks like a lot, this side. Yes, when you move farther away in the evolution is another thing. But very unlikely, we will move to a place <laughs> that's that elevated, will be mm -hmm. around Earth. And if we are around Earth, it's already good. <laughs> it could be worse. So if we increase our awareness, yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. And Daniel, you raise your hand. Hi, uh, just, a, just a tiny comment. Uh, not that I know how to do it is this something that I, I would desire to to know how to do it but uh, just to give a little bit of my opinion uh, just getting a, a hook on the quantity uh, sometimes just I think with myself uh, and I, I want to ask you if you if you, if you think is correct if you are feeling overwhelmed physically and not feeling capable of studying as much as you want, uh, not necessarily is the quantity, uh, but the, the intention of learning. Uh, and sometimes if you have a lot of things to do with your own hands, uh, like uh, taking care of your family and, and that kind of stuff, it is, uh, is actually maybe the practical way of really putting the knowledge to, to, to the action. Um, and so if you, if you uh, regardless if you are children, uh, if you are serving good food, if you are doing that with love, you're already exercising uh, very well what, what we are learning here. So I just want to say that it is easy to get anxious to try to do everything at once, but sometimes all that we need is a little bit of a time to rest the mind and, and connect with, with actually some, some, uh, someone, uh, so, some good spirits may already giving us in terms of energy to do actually the, our daily work with, uh, uh, with the opportunity maybe uh yeah to apply what we're already doing maybe uh we are already doing what we need to do it's just the way that we do and uh, more peacefully um and having the calmness of of having the time of the things that we do sometimes that that is i think uh what i must fail on doing but gives a little bit of a opportunity to not get overwhelmed. Daniel, there's no right or wrong, right? And uh, we should not judge. So that's not what we are here for either, right? Everyone needs to see what is within their possibilities. And if you are comfortable with what you do, you have your answer. If you are comfortable with the amount of what you can do, that's it. And because on the end of the day, 
no one convinces anyone to do anything they don't want to do. And I agree that the, the, sometimes the intensity of the study or is not the quantity, it's the quality. Yeah. And the most important is to practice what you learn. And if, you, if you're happy now with the amount you practice, yeah. so be it. You know, so if you're happy with that, 